If you're looking to live stream to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or pretty much anywhere else online, and you want an easy solution to do that with multiple camera angles, no wires, and to be able to run it from a phone or a tablet, you gotta check this thing out. This is the Logitech Mevo camera system. The Mevo Start 3-pack comes with three different cameras that all will sync up together using an app on your phone or tablet to then stream wirelessly online. You can live stream in 1080p, you can set up multiple cameras beyond even the three that are included in this box, then you use the app to control it. You pretty much can live stream from anywhere that you have internet access. I'm gonna start this video by walking through the different features of the cameras, like where can you stream with them? Can you record to them locally? What kind of battery life do they have? And how you can mount them in different ways. Next, I'll show you how to set up all the cameras with the app, get it up and running, get all the cameras updated, show you how to switch camera angles and change some of the settings you're gonna to wanna to change. Then I'll cover the different audio options you have with these cameras beyond just recording to the internal microphones, but actually plugging in microphones that are a little bit cheaper and using some more professional options. Next, I'll show some test footage and test audio so you can get a feel for the quality level of these cameras. We'll talk through the different pricing options for getting one or multiple of these cameras and then some of the accessories that come with it. And I'll talk through some of the use cases that I think these cameras will be really great for. In the box of the Mevo Start 3-pack, you get the three individual Mevo cameras. You get three USB cables that have USB-C on one side and USB-A on the other. These can be used to either plug the camera into a computer, and you can even use it as a webcam if you wanted to, or you would use that to charge the cameras. Then you get the little instruction card. It's not really a manual. Basically, it just tells you to download the Mevo app on your phone or tablet and get started. Using the Mevo app, you can stream to a bunch of different places. You could do Facebook, YouTube Live, Twitch, Twitter, LinkedIn, Livestream, Vimeo, or you could use NDI and add these to an existing live stream broadcast that has a lot of cameras going already. Whether you're live streaming or not, you can record using these cameras as well. Directly to your phone or your tablet, you can record the active angle that you're switching between, but you can also put in a micro SD card in the back of these cameras, record each of the files locally, and then do a multi-camera edit later. Each of these cameras fully charged should last around six hours, but you can also just leave them plugged into a USB battery bank or into a wall socket. If you wanna know how much battery is left in each of them, there are four white lights on the back that will slowly go down as the power is going down, or you can always check the battery of each camera in your app. Now, while this set has three cameras, you can actually run more than three if you want to. So if you bought more individual Mevo cameras or bought another three pack, if you had a newer phone or tablet, it's really hardware dependent you could run six cameras or more that I've seen people running. Each camera records and live streams in up to 1080p, 30 frames per second. It does have a fixed camera lens, so there's no zooming in or out, but on the bottom it does have a quarter 20 inch thread, but you can also flip out the adapter here and you can mount it onto a 3 8 inch thread like a traditional mic stand. Back of the camera you have the on off button, the microphone input, the USB-C port, which is used for charging, and the micro SD card port. And then under the Mevo name there, that number and letter combination is the name of your individual camera, which you'll see in the app when you're setting it up. On top there are the internal microphones, and that's about it. Next, let's use the app to connect all the cameras together and get things going. So the first thing you wanna do is download the Mevo Multicam app, this right here. We're gonna go ahead and open that. It says, get started. It says turn on each Mevo camera and the next screen you'll connect them all to your Wi-Fi and make sure you want to use the latest firmware. So next here. Now it's giving me a little demo. It says in the plus button down here, you can add camera sources or graphics. So just start recording, hit the record button. To start a live session, hit live. Okay, we're ready to add our cameras. So we're gonna go ahead and click plus. We're gonna say camera. We're gonna hold power button for three seconds. One, two, three. Heard a beep there, so it found that one. You can see here it says 28Q45, which matches the back of this camera here. Go ahead and tap on that. It shows me the battery percentage there, and I'm gonna click Setup. And then if you wanna click Yes, I have Wi-Fi, you would connect to your local Wi-Fi network. You would say No if you want to use this as an access point and use it for remote streaming. You'd only really wanna say no, I'm not on Wi-Fi if you're going to be streaming a sporting event or a graduation or something where you're outside of a Wi-Fi network and you're gonna be using your phone or tablet's cellular data to do that streaming. But 
we're inside in the studio here, and we say, yes, I have Wi-Fi. And it says, keep your cameras and mobile device within 100 feet or 30 meters of your access point. So for me, keep it within 100 feet of my Wi-Fi router. Next. You'll choose your Wi-Fi network. I'm going to go ahead and tap the 5G one and put in my password. Then you tap connect, and you have that camera all set up. So if I pick this up here, you can see it's pointing at the iPad, and it's working. So I'm getting signal there. Go ahead and put it back down. So what you want to do when you first get this set up is you're going to want to update the firmware and the cameras to the latest version. So let's do that now. So firmware update available. You can see all the firmware update changes there, updating the firmware. So I'm going to now go ahead and update the firmware, get all three cameras connected, and we'll do a time jump and keep going. Now you can see once all the cameras are connected and all the firmware are updated, you can see their battery percentages right there. You can see I'm connected to all of them. You can see the names of each of the cameras, which you can rename later, but just helps you know which camera is which. Continue, and then you can see a video preview of what each of the cameras are seeing. This one's black because you can see here is pointed at the table. And you can also see the audio levels here next to each of the cameras, as well as the battery levels, the names of the camera, which you can rename. In the bottom right corner, you have three dots that bring up a menu for image adjustments. So you can see here, it shows you a preview of it. And then you can adjust things like exposure, white balance, say maybe you're outdoors or backlit or custom. You can change some presets if you want to do black and white or you know more contrast, more saturation. Change the metering settings, that sort of thing. You can also go to the Mevo settings, and here's where you rename the camera. So you can rename it something if you want to. Format the SD card. Some other things you might want to know is you can turn off the status lights or change the brightness of them. You can power external USB devices, which would be handy if you're plugging in a USB microphone into one of these cameras, like the Blue Yeti. That would give that microphone power from the camera. And some other settings to, you know, factory reset, or if you want the, the camera to turn off based on the USB cable being plugged in and things like that. We'll go ahead and close that. The third option in that menu is crop and zoom, and this will open up a big preview of the camera. And then you can press and hold somewhere, and you can either do a cut a fast transition or a slow transition. You can see there, slow transition. It's doing a zoom in. And now I can see the full preview of the image, but the blue square or rectangle is what is actually being shown in the recording or in the live stream. Click done. So you can see there that image is now cropped in. Let's go back to crop and zoom. Let's go back to full and hit done. The remaining things in that menu are if you go to reorder, you can then move the cameras, change the order that they are visually, click done, or you can remove a camera entirely, which I'm not going to do. The next setting I wanna make sure that you check is go to the three dot menu here at the bottom and go to camera input quality. Now, it came default as 480p, gonna definitely wanna increase that quality so we're going to go to 1080p, not the high version, but just the one right under that. And all the cameras should have to reconnect. They're going to have to reboot to the new resolution. So you can see they're all loading there. Now they're all streaming and recording at that higher quality. Also in the menu, I would check the video source latency. The latency is really going to depend on how strong your network is that you're doing the live streaming through. I would probably do low latency if you're pretty comfortable with your, your network. And if you're using these for zoom or google meet or something like that as a webcam they recommend ultra low latency but somewhere between default and low latency is probably where you're going to keep it to go back to showing your cameras you just tap right here the folder here with the different camera angles this would be if you have graphics or other things you've imported using this menu here you know graphics you can set up picture in picture or import more audio sources so go back to here to see our cameras and you'll see that the active camera here has a red box around it so if i tap here now this is my preview program monitor of what's going to be broadcast or recorded locally. And then the red box is the active camera. You can see as I switch between them, it changes there in the upper right. Underneath that preview window there, you have this, which will, you can hear the preview there, of that's actually muting the monitoring of the audio. So you could plug in a pair of headphones into your tablet or phone that you're using, get a preview of what you're actually broadcasting or recording for the audio, I'm gonna leave that muted for now because I don't need to hear another version of myself. Then you have the options here for live, recording locally, or beta here is actually a webcam. I'll go ahead and do a drop down here. You get more information of your input quality and how much free space you have on the device. If I go live here, 
It's going to tell me to choose my destination, log into the platform, set all of that up, and the actual live streaming resolution is something you're going to want to change quality-wise there in the upper right. And then even when you're live streaming, you can still, like I said, record locally to your device or to your cameras. So there is a checkbox here in the lower left to make sure that you are recording another copy while you're going live. This might be maybe the live version is private, but you want to edit down and trim down the clips for social media or to share in a behind the paywall situation or just publish at a higher quality than what a live stream would enable after you can more precisely change those camera angles. So definitely consider recording the things you do live as well. And you can see the different platforms there, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo, Twitch, RTMP. If I go ahead and close this and I go to record, this is going to ask for access to record that file locally. So I'm going to say allow, and then it'll tell you whether or not you have SD cards inserted into the cameras. And if you do, how much space there is left on those. It'll tell you how long you can record for at certain quality levels. And then remember, each of these have their own quality settings. So I changed the quality on the cameras. I had to change the quality on the stream. Now I'm changing the recording quality just to make sure you go through all these and they don't say 480p because it's not going to be as crispy a footage as you would want it to be. Also, recording locally, let's go 1080p. Now we have the highest quality here. You can see my iPad has a lot of space on it. I could record for 54 hours of a multicam if I wanted to. If I wanted to hit record, I would just hit record right there and it would start recording all three angles, either locally to the micro SD cards or whatever angle I have selected to my device. This third red button here is to actually connect to a computer. And as I'm recording this, it's in a beta format. You could use one camera as your webcam. Maybe down the line, you'll be able to use multiple cameras in Zoom, Google Meet, or different conferencing apps. For now, I'm going to close out of that, and I'm going to show you how to import some graphics. So we go ahead and hit plus here, go to graphics. Then you have to choose which kind of graphic it is. You have full screen overlays that are gonna take up the full screen, pretty obvious in the title, a lower third, which would be kind of a name bar at the bottom of the screen, an over the shoulder, which is kind of an image up in the corner, and a corner bug, kind of consider that more like a watermark, maybe your logo in the, in the lower right corner, for example. Let's just go ahead and do lower third. And this is actually gonna be something that you make from scratch. You can choose the format. Maybe there's two lines of text. You're gonna change the background color. Maybe it's green and maybe the, the opacity is there. You can change the, the color of the text, change it to white. Let's go ahead and type something. Add another. Just because it's green and white, I'm gonna go ahead and do MSU alumni next. So that's there. You can also put it at the top or on the right side if you want to, so you can move it around a little bit. Bottom left is normal to me. So now you have that lower third. If you want to have it on screen, you just tap it. You want to take it away, tap it away again. So you can add other graphics, make other graphics, load in photos, load in images that you want to overlay onto your stream, onto your recording, and that's how you do that. After graphics, you can do a picture in picture. So you could have one camera be the main thing you're seeing and then a picture in picture of another angle. An example of this would be, you know, for this demo that I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of top-down recording showing you my iPad. I might have a picture in picture to show my face in the corner. So let's pretend like this one is the picture in picture we want to do. Move it like this in different spots. So I could even put it right in the middle if I want, probably bottom right. Uh, free placement. Oh, then I can actually then I can actually move it around. So that's cool. So you can put it all the way in the corner if you want to. And then you have whether you want a border around it, uh, maybe a white border. Scroll down. Oh, you can change the aspect ratio. Circle, square. That's cool. I always like to do a circle kind of picture in picture of a person. So I'm not showing much. This camera is on its side right now, charging. But you can get the you can get the idea. You put your head in the corner while you're doing a demo of whatever you're showing. Let's go ahead and click done. Then if you want that to show, you can just tap that. So you go back to your camera angles. You know, you want to you want to show this camera here. Then you want the picture in picture. You go back over here. Turn that on and off if you want to. Go back to your other camera, the main one with the talking head. Put the lower third on for a second. Turn that off. 
So there's a lot of flexibility in the graphics and you can get creative with what you want to show. One thing to keep in mind about the app is if it does close, you're going to have your stream end and your recording stop. So I would recommend using an additional device if you have one, maybe that extra iPad you don't use all the time or buy one specifically for doing your streaming and recording. Let's talk a little bit more about the audio options with this. You have in the lower right there, the preview of all of the different angles. You have your output, which is your final output that everyone's going to hear or the recording is going to record. You can see the levels there. You can drag them down or up. You can see there, you don't want it to hit red too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower that by, let's say five decibels roughly. And then you can also mute individual cameras. So this is where it would be helpful to rename each of your cameras. So you could have a cam that's you talking to the camera and that could be your main one that you want the audio to come from. Then you could have a top down overhead camera and then maybe an over the shoulder or a similar setup to what I have where you have one here that you can demo things with, a top down and then one you're looking at. That's kind of how I would set up the three cameras if I was doing this sort of review, demo, tutorial, show someone how to do something. And I would rename each of those cameras and then you probably don't want the audio coming from all three of them because you know I would probably choose the one that's closest to your mouth. So that might actually be the overhead camera and you would go ahead and mute the other ones so you don't have all of them capturing audio at the same time. Now there might be situations where you do want audio from all of them. Maybe you're doing a sporting event and you have one camera behind home plate, you have one by first base and you have one, I don't know, in the outfield or something like that. Maybe you mute the outfield one or maybe you mute the one behind home plate. So maybe you want the, the sound of the, the ball hitting the mitt, but you might want sound like down the first baseline or down the third baseline or some crowd sound or what have you. So you might wanna get creative about which microphones you're muting and what their audio levels are at. Once you have the audio muted on the cameras that you want and you have them at their proper levels, you can go ahead and hit the gear icon for each camera and you get different kinds of audio controls. You have auto gain control, you turn this off this volume control knob here is going to be the, the master control of whether it's quiet or loud. If you auto gain control, it's going to figure out whether or not it needs to turn down the audio levels or turn up the audio levels to try to capture sound. So you get more control, turn that off. Force internal mics will override whether there's something plugged into the microphone port. If you want to change how the mic is processing, general is just like, it's picking up everything. Music, it's going to be more tuned to the spikes and high levels of music, speech, it's going to be focused on that. And wind, it'll reduce some of the frequencies of the wind blowing outside. If you want to increase the audio quality of your live streams or recordings, you're gonna to wanna to plug in something into that 3.5 millimeter jack in the back of one of the cameras. So you can plug in a bunch of different stuff. You could plug in a wired lavalier microphone, a wireless setup that, you know, you have a lavalier on you and the wireless receiver is on the camera. It opens up a lot of options, but when you plug something into there, you go ahead and go to audio settings for that camera. It's gonna say, is this line level or mic level? And this is going to depend on what you plug into it. If you plug in something that is already going to be fairly loud, it's probably gonna be a line level. If it's something that needs to be boosted, like a lavalier microphone, it's probably gonna be mic level. So make sure you choose the right setting when you have those plugged in. I wanna talk through some examples of how you could get creative with this. So what if you had three different people that are having a discussion on camera and you have the multiple cameras trying to capture that, you could essentially put a lavalier microphone on each of them wirelessly, plug one of those receivers into each of the Mevo cameras, and you could individually record the audio levels of each of those people as they're talking. Another option, if you want some background music during your live stream would be to run a cable from a phone or another device into the back of one of the cameras, play music at a certain volume level, you can lower it down. So it's just kind of some background music while you're doing your stream. Or you can run an audio from another source like the soundboard at a graduation ceremony or the PA announcer at a sporting event connecting from their system to your system and you'll capture the audio. Another option is you can find compatible USB-C devices that will be powered by these cameras by plugging them into that USB-C port, one being the Blue Yeti Nano. You plug that in, it recognizes it as an audio source. Now the battery is going to drain out of the camera a little faster when you're doing it that way, but that's another option. Just make sure you go into the camera settings 
and enable the powered USB option. As you're adding in all these different audio devices, remember in the bottom left is the plus to add cameras, graphics, and picture in picture, but that's also where you would add in some audio. So you can see you have three active through this through these cameras. If you add in more that are plugged into those cameras, either through the 3.5 millimeter jack or through USB, you'll see those listed as well. You can also turn on the iPad itself to capture audio if you want to, or you can use the Mevo mic app as an external microphone as well. So you could have different phones set up with that app tucked in someone's pocket with a microphone ran through that. You have additional audio sources. Kind of it just kind of snowballs into all these different things you can do that's way more advanced and beyond what you might think using a few wireless cameras that have built in mics, but you can actually get some really high quality sound in some unique situations for mixing all the audio together. I can see these being used in a bunch of different environments. It's a more DIY budget friendly option to have multiple cameras broadcasting something live. There could be live events like band performances, houses of worship, DJs, things like that that just wanna broadcast their stuff. Other type of live events I think these cameras would be great for would be sporting events. You know, you're not going to get the really zoomed in quality that you could get if you had separate cameras with lenses that you had people manning and controlling, but for just kind of a set it and forget it multi-camera switch between different angles, you could see something happening in a sporting event for people that can't be there live. That's a great option. You could be teaching live as well. You could do fitness classes, teaching people how to do stuff in the kitchen, DIY crafts or hobby type things, product reviews, to have a multi-camera thing where you can change the angles on an iPad easily, set up the audio how you want to. It's a pretty simple system to set up and you don't really have to go into the settings more than once to make sure your quality settings are, are set properly. It's pretty straightforward and if you know how to use a phone or a tablet, you're gonna be able to figure out how to use the app that goes with this. As someone that already owns a lot of cameras and does do live streams that are a little bit more complex sometimes, this also adds in just additional cameras for a very small price that I can plug in via NDI into OBS or Ecamm Live or whatever streaming software I'm using to just get additional camera angles that's wireless and I can place it, forget it, it'll be there running for a few hours on battery and not have to worry about it. Here are some examples of both the visual quality and the audio quality. This is an example of what it looks like during a live stream. And then here is the same clip recorded locally to a micro SD card, just so you can see the quality difference, if any. Here's what the built-in microphones sound like. This is an audio test using the internal microphones on the Mevo Start cameras. I'm about a foot away from the camera. This is an audio test using the internal microphones on the Mevo Start cameras. I'm about three feet away from the camera right now. Here's what it could sound like if you plug in a wireless lavalier system. This is an audio test of running a wireless lavalier into the Logitech Mevo. So you can see the increase in audio quality if you use a wireless lavalier system like the Sennheiser AVX. And this is what it could sound like if you plug in an XLR microphone like the Blue Sona. And then this test is the Blue Sona XLR microphone plugged into a USB audio interface and running that into the 3.5 millimeter jack. And this just shows how you can run broadcast level quality audio into these Mevo cameras. As far as pricing goes, you can get an individual camera for $399 at the time of recording this, or you can get the Mevo Start 3-pack, which comes with three cameras and USB cables for $999. They also have their own accessories for mounting it to different places. They have the table stand for about $80, and a floor stand for about $80. And if you're gonna to attach to a fence for a sporting event, they have the fence clip mini for about $100. If you wanna stabilize your connection as well and not use Wi-Fi, they have an ethernet power adapter for about 150 bucks that you could plug into each camera too. Normally, if you wanna live stream with multiple cameras, it's way more expensive and way more complex than this. I believe me, I've done it. I've had all the cameras and lenses and batteries set up. We have all the cables running between them all. You have a hardware switcher plugged into a computer running software to do all the, the angle switching and graphics and things like that. I've not seen something like this before that comes with the cameras and a free app and the ability to do it all wirelessly. Yeah, you might sacrifice some quality a little bit on the image, but when you're streaming stuff, you're really dependent on your bandwidth anyways. And even at $50,000 camera running through to Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or whatever is going to be compressed and isn't going to look as great anyway. So I think these are a great value for what you're getting. The three cameras, being able to live stream, the ability to record locally, doing different audio setups like I talked about where you can get a little creative with what's running into these and what's running into the app. I think if you're looking to do a multi-camera live stream on a budget, 
this is the best option I know of. And yes, Logitech did sponsor this video and sent me this gear to test and check out, but I'm really surprised at how easy it was to set up, how quickly I could get the cameras going, how simple and straightforward the app is to change settings and manipulate things, and kind of the expandability of adding more camera angles, using it with different audio devices and adjusting the levels and being able to run it from an iPad or an iPhone for this price point. There just isn't anything else on the market that I've seen. And this I think can help a lot of people in my audience that are looking to do some multi-camera production, but don't have thousands of dollars to spend to get all the gear to get that up to speed and want to be able to run it themselves and be able to just have the iPad sitting there changing the camera angles or put it in auto director mode and have it change for you. There's just a lot of different options with this setup and the ability to run different audio in and out. I think it's great. If you want to pick up the Logitech Mevo, I'll link to it below the video, as well as more resources from Logitech on how to set this up a little bit more detailed than I might have gone into. Thanks for watching. Cheers.